joining us now on the program to unpack the security situation in the east of DRC. We have Defence and Security Analyst David Otto joining us now from Abuja. Uh, thank you so much for your time, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayu, for having me. Thank you. Well, as a security expert, help us understand, what are we seeing playing out here in the DRC? What, what do you make of the violence in the eastern region? Uh, well, Layo, this has been a historical area where uh, conflict has ravaged, uh, especially the eastern part of Congo, uh, the Turi province. Uh, you've got uh, also the, uh, the Goma and the northern part of uh, Kivu, uh, where rebel groups, uh, including the likes of, uh, you know, M23, the likes of the FLRDR, uh, but, but also groups like Kodeko, you know, the Corporation for the Development of the Congo, uh, they've often operated, you know, either attacking uh, each other along tribal lines. Uh, you know, for example, uh, the uh, the Kodeko supporting uh, the Lendu tribe against uh, the Hema tribe. Uh, but also, um, you know, from a regional point of view, we've had, uh, you know, countries like Rwanda being accused uh, by DRC uh, of lending uh, military support uh, to the M23 rebels, one of about 120 rebel groups that operate within that region. Very rich, you know, these areas, and, you know, hence explains why there has been constant conflict. But Rwanda has often denied that it is uh, directly supporting uh, M23, even though the UN, the US, uh, the EU uh, has found evidence of, of that direct support, and they've called upon Rwanda to seize uh, supporting this group. So uh, this area is ravaged by, you know, some kind of conflicts. Last week, I think a couple of days back, we saw clashes uh, between tribes, uh, you know, people being killed. Uh, so um, DRC Congo has often, especially in its northern part, you know, been very chaotic. And the UN has been accused of being very unable uh, to deal with, uh, uh, you know, restoring peace and security within this region. So there we have it internal and external conflict are still ongoing. Indeed, David, and you've already mentioned, you know, the U.S. is the latest accusation coming from U.S. of Rwanda, you know, back in the M23 rebels, but Rwanda has constantly denied this. What do you think would be Rwanda's gain? Well, um, you know, first of all, Rwanda is a sovereign state. Um, they would want to defend themselves against such accusations, you know, because it's, it's a repetition of damage uh, if a country is seen to support a rebel group against another country. Uh, that could also be a declaration of war. Um, so Rwanda would, you know, do everything possible to deny these allegations, even though uh, countries like the United States, the UN and the EU, you know, have directly found evidence of Rwanda's direct support. Uh, so for Rwanda, um, their game is to deny these accusations. Uh, their game is to, uh, if at all, maintain uh, the relationship that they have with uh, M23, uh, perhaps to destabilize the region, and that gives them access to uh, raw materials that come from that area. That would be their game. But this is not the first country that the DRC Congo has accused uh, of plundering. Uh, they've accused Uganda, they've accused neighboring states, Last time, you know, they even had to ask uh, countries um, like uh, Kenya to vacate uh, their peacekeeping mission because they thought they were being compromised. So it's a chaotic, um, you know, situation in that area. Now, we've seen protests in the last uh, few days. Uh, citizens, you know, accusing the West and international community of silence over what is happening in the DRC. What role are they expecting, you know, them to play that the local troops? Because we know the Southern African Development Community mission, that's the SAMI DRC. It has a, the SADC has a mission in the DRC with uh, South African troops and, you know, other countries having their troops on ground helping to fight uh, these uh, rebels. So what exactly are these people, you know, looking for to, what, what, what are they expecting the international community to do? What role are they expecting them to play that SADC isn't already doing? Well, I think for the past two decades, uh, Layo, um, we've had peacekeeping missions uh, being flown into uh, the northern part of DRC. Uh, we still haven't seen any solutions. The UN has been accused of, you know, being very unable to deal with the situation. 
Uh, I doubt if SADC is going to make any difference. Um, of course, um, we had, uh, you know, uh, Kenya, of course, deploying its forces there, joint, joint forces. Uh, that did not produce any results. Um, I think, you know, the solution is local. Um, in, in my opinion, DRC has to, uh, you know, wear its seatbelts on and, you know, find a local strategy to deal with these issues. Uh, but of course, there is a big role that the international community can play, especially uh, with the accusations that um, Rwanda is sponsoring M23, of which Rwanda denies. Um, so you need to have the international community present in that situation. Uh, they need to speak to uh, the neighbors of DRC Congo. Congo has often accused its neighbors uh, of, you know, uh, plundering its resources, including countries like Uganda. So it's not the first time. But, you know, from a local point of view, I think, you know, the Congolese uh, need to find a, a solution to this problem. Uh, but, of course, they need help. Because, um, uh, you know, as long as you have countries like Rwanda being accused of supporting M23, uh, then, of course, uh, it's not just an internal matter. It is a matter of regional uh, collaboration and coordination. But, you know, to be honest with you, I think that this is where the African Union plays a very critical role. Um, they've just had uh, the 37th, um, you know, a summit uh, being held in Ethiopia. I would expect uh, to see uh, some solutions being put on the table on how to deal with the DRC. I mean, DRC is so important for the continent, uh, and it cannot be left in chaos as it is. Indeed. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Defence and Security Analyst David Otto. Thank you for your insights. Uh, thank you.